What's up guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Airtable's native automations feature to send emails directly out of your Airtable base without any Zapier or any other subscriptions. So if you're a business owner, this will be very useful in sending out those emails based on like specific parameters being met or if you're just a regular user, then this can also be very useful as well. So if you haven't met me yet, my name is Ben Green and I'm the owner of Optimize IS. And what we do is we help businesses set up some of these automations, do database implementations, workflow automations, etc. So if you need help with stuff like this, then go down in the description and click request a consultation and you can speak with me or someone on my team. Without further ado, we'll get right into the video. All right, so now you are in your Airtable base and you have the automations open, as you can see I do over here on the right. And if you haven't found the automations yet, I'll click X here. But what you're gonna do, is you'll just come up here and you'll click automations and then you can create your first automation. So if you haven't created one yet, then you can just click new automation and name it whatever you would like. So we'll do tutorial. You just type in your name and then click off of that. And then you click choose trigger. And the way these automations are going to work is they're just going to be a trigger and an action. So the trigger will be something happens in your, in your Airtable base, most likely, or it can be external as well. So for us, we're just going to focus on these, these triggers right here, and they're all very easy and intuitive to use. You can also play around with these triggers, but we're just going to do it based on something happening in our Airtable base. So we will do when record matches conditions. And this, the, there's another way when record enters a view, and this was a old way of doing what we're going to be doing. You would add a view where it's the filter of this, these conditions we want it to meet. But now we can just have it when a record matches these conditions, it automatically triggers our automation. So we will do that. And this is all you'll need to do here is just fill out, go step by step, watch this video, go step by step through this and follow along. And you'll have your email automation set up very quickly. All right, so what we're going to start off with is we're going to start off with an automation around interactions. And what we're going to do is once an interaction is completed and filled in, then we're going to have it send a update to the person who filled it out. That way it's in their email and you could also like have it automatically sent to the manager. So I'll also add that email in there. And this will be very useful for like follow-ups to make sure everybody's clear on what happened or whatever you want to use it for. That's more important. So I'm just going to go through the steps on how to do this. So well, you'll take, you'll choose your table. So we're going to do interactions and then we're going to do an interaction. So if we go to the interactions table, we're only going to do this on pricing discussion because we want to notify our manager once we get someone to pricing discussion. Because if it was just discovery, then like their inbox would be flooded with the amount of people that we just get in that discovery phase, because that's one of the initial ones. It's really a funnel that funnels it down. So for just pricing, we'll just do that. So when the type is pricing discussion, and you can also add more in here. So I'll add like when interaction is not blank, which it should not be, but you can add as many here. You can add, I think you can actually, I've not found a limit to the amount of conditions you can add on an automation. Whereas like in a view in your Airtable base, there are a limit to, I think like two or three filters that you can add for each view. So this will be very useful if you really want to drill down into what your conditions are. So then you can come and click run test. Test ran successfully, that's perfect. Then you click done. So you've done half the work now. You've done that trigger and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the action. And to set up the action, you just click add action and we're gonna do send email out of Gmail. You can also send email out of Airtable but it has some limitations as to like what that email looks like with like the send and the reply to and et cetera. So, we're just going to send an email out of your Gmail account. And so what you want to do when you start setting this up is you're going to want to select your Gmail account. And for you, you're going to want to come over here and click connect new Gmail account. So I'll just use mine that I've already set up and this is all you'll need. So there's a few options here and you'll want to know for two to separate multiple emails with commas. So, I do want to get into a suggested tip if you are sending emails out of Airtable, if you're using linked records. And if you're not using linked records, then I would skip ahead like 20 seconds, but this will be a very useful tip for those of you who are, 
or if you ever want to. So say for someone in here, I have a contact twice. So like I have two people's email. If I have a lookup over here where I, so if I'm basing it off of contact and I have this lookup where it looks up their email, I'm not gonna be able to pull that into the two in this email natively. So if I come over and click email from contact, that's not like you can't pick it. And so there's what the issue here is, is you need to get it into like text or a string is what they call it. So I just always do a formula and I think there's two ways to do this. You can either, I like to just reference it. So if you, all you have to do is just click that and you can create the field and you'll be good. So if I create the field emails for automation, then you can just come over here and click that and now that'll show up. Another popular fun way to do this is if you do array join. So you can use the function array join and set it up this way and then reference your, your lookup field and it does the same thing. So these will be comma separated and that's, that'll be perfect for what you want to use it for. And if you then just reference that here, then you can send it to multiple people. So I'll insert that record there. And then the subject can be, it can have both static and dynamic text. So what I mean by static is if I, so I guess first we'll do, well, I'll explain dynamic. So dynamic is like this record that I pulled in from the two, and this changes every time. Static is something that's going to be in there every time. So if I want me to be in here, so I'll do Ben optimize, optimize is.com and that'll be perfect. So now for the subject, if we want some of that st static and dynamic, we can do recap of the interaction. So that right there is static what we have so far. And if you want to introduce some dynamic, then you could introduce what it, what you have in the function over here as just the interaction name. So you can also include a message in here and I would, I try to just like, hi, just keep it quick and simple in the beginning if this is like a recap, but you can make it as detailed as you want when you're doing this. And you can also pull in that static text again. So you can pull in the, like the record URL. So you can go straight to that record. You can pull in the interaction. You can pull in the type, we'll do the name, you can insert the date and time, and you can also insert these link records, I believe. Yeah. So you can play around with like your link records and like how much you want in there, but um, we're gonna delete that. Make sure you have them in the right place as I just saw, and then you can have like your outro as well, so. So you can include all of that static and dynamic text in there and you can also include attachments. So if you have an attachment folder in here, then you can include those attachments. And another way to do that attachments is say those attachments are a lookup field. If you do this function on a attachment, then what it's gonna do is it'll give you a, like it's gonna be an Airtable link and I would just pull that link in here. So pull in that record that like field in that record as a dynamic text up here instead of as an actual attachment. And then people can open that attachment from the link instead of having to download it here and look to look at it. So there's also more options as well. So you can do CC, BCC, from name, from address, reply to, and all of that. You can change that in here. You can have that be static text or you can have it be dynamic and we'll, I'm not going to do any of that right now just because it's pretty self-explanatory. Just like chain, like add your CC emails, add your BCC emails with that same comma separation and add that from name, from address reply to. So we'll click run test and then this will test this app and test ran successfully. And so then once you've clicked done and you have it exactly set up how you want it and it'll run every time when those conditions are met, all you have to do is you have, you just have to come up here and toggle this on and you never have to look at it again. You, I'm going to toggle it off because I don't need it running, 
but you can do that and then just like pull up your apps and if you're curious on how to make these apps then go to my channel and i just posted a video on how to do data visualization with like charts and pivot tables so make sure and go check out that video and if you need help with stuff in your business like setting up the systems and automations then go down in the description and click request a consultation from me or someone on my team and we will get you set up with whatever you'd like with database implementation. So I hope this was helpful. Go ahead and throw a comment and we'll go watch those videos on, on the data visualization.